Let us pray. Father, I thank you for another opportunity that we can be here to um, study your word together. I thank you that for the new time, I pray that um, it will help us to even be able to um, spend time before we um, get to the general service. Um, even as we study your word, I ask for help for myself, that even as I teach and I explain stuff that it's, it won't come from a place of bias or a place of experience per se, but it will come from a place of um, re revelation. And where I where I can't say anything, Holy Spirit, you that you're the teacher, I ask you to teach every single one of us individually the way we would understand it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Good morning, everybody. Oh, right. It's good to be here again. Praise God. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much. Thank God you can hear me. Okay, so um, last week we were we, we stopped at political engagement, and um, we were talking about politics and um engaging in politics as Christians. And I remember that um one of the things that um stood out to me was um the motivation behind um becoming quote unquote, quote unquote politically active or active in any of those ways. So I remember that one of the things I learned was that, um, you know, politics is not just about um, national politics or, or international politics, even local politics. It has politics in every sphere of our lives. And for us, as part of, as being a Christian, as part of being a Christian, we should be more and more um, involved in, political discourse so yes yeah, that's one of the things that I got um I try as much as I used to try as much as possible to shy away and um, I found I remember that the, the least and the basic thing that we can do as Christians is to vote um if you can't stand for election um vote and what we who we vote for is not about political parties or whatever we vote for principles whoever best suits the principles that we want is who we vote for so you look at what does what does the person what does the person um do who what does the person um um i want to use encapsulate encapsulate i don't know why that word came to my head but what does the person embody what's like the whole thing about the person and then that's what we now um um, go for and we pray about it and we just go for it by faith um, and we also I also remember that it's God that chooses who we who becomes our ruler um, who rules over us or who has authority over us um, and you know it actually leads to what we're studying today and it says staying spiritually minded in the face of persecution and I just thought it was really interesting because persecution <laughs> Thank you. Me, I don't know why big words just come to my mind. I can't say it. I can't read it. I can't say it. And the word will come to my mind. Thank you for laughing with me. So, um, and then the staying spiritually minded. And you know, it's interesting because many times we don't understand that it's the people that rule that end up, quote unquote, persecuting the people that are under um, or people that are in charge that rule. And I remember, as even as I'm saying it, I didn't remember it when I was studying, but I remember that. That's what happened with um, the children of Israel. When the new ruler, they could not vote for that one, but you know, when the new ruler that came, the new Pharaoh that came, they said the Pharaoh that came that did not know Joseph. He didn't know anything about it. And maybe he didn't even care. And what did he do? He persecuted them. He put them under slavery. And they were there for 450 years. So that's the kind of thing that can happen when we have the wrong people in charge. So um, today's memory verse is quite long. So <laughs> the Lord will be our strength. Okay, I've already um, highlighted that. Uh, yeah. So these are what we'll be talking about, the grace to stand in face of persecution and our union in, with Christ. Questions, um, conclusions, discussions. These are memory verse. It's quite long. And in all honesty, I could not, I could not uh, memorize it, like the whole thing, but I just memorized the some parts of it, but it's a scripture that most of us, I kind of like know. So yeah, so I'm reading from Romans chapter eight, verse 31 to um, 13, who, that's not right, 37 actually, sorry, ignore that. It's 37 to 39 for the memory verse. And it says, 
Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor the principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Romans chapter 8, verse 37 to 39. Please, sorry, ignore that. That was a wrong, very, very, very wrong. Sorry, I didn't see that. So um, well, I'm going to try and say it together, but it's still the word of God. Even if it's only the word of God we study today, that's and we mem- try and memorize and remember, then that's awesome. So if you can unmute, that would be really great. Um, that would be really great. So it says, um, Romans chapter 8, verse 37 to 39. Romans chapter eight, Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors. Through him that loved us. Through him that loved us. For I am persuaded. For I am persuaded. That neither death nor life. Neither death nor life. Nor angels nor principalities. No angels, no angels, no principality, no powers, no powers, no powers. No things present, no things, no things present, no things to come, no, no things, things, to things to come, no height, height, no height. No, no death, no, no death. death, no any creature, no, no, any, any, creature. no any other creature. No, no, any other, other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God. Shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Which is in Christ, Christ Jesus our Lord. Romans chapter eight. Romans chapter eight, verse thirty-seven to thirty-nine. Thank you very much. That was very good reading. Um, one of the things that stood out to me um, was that in all these things that were more than conquerors. And I remember um, Pastor Terry, he was explaining what it means to be more than a conqueror. Um, And he was saying that, okay, so if he goes out and he does something and after he has done it, he comes back home and maybe he goes and he makes money, for example. I'm not getting it very right, but something like that. He makes money and he, and he gets the money and he comes back and he sees his wife and his wife says, okay, yeah, thank you very much. Give me the things that you have gotten and she gets everything. So she is more than a conqueror. <laughs> that she's more than him that went out to get it. So that is what it means to me. Anytime I, I see that scripture, that's what I remember, more than a conqueror. Jesus has gone, has gone and he has gotten, has fought the battle and everything. And then we are the ones that are getting the benefits, quote and unquote, of, of what he has done. That was an, I can't remember what scripture, what um I think what um retreat that was, but that was what he was he he said that I keep remembering every time I see the scripture, that's why I remember about being more than a conqueror. So um so the the, the Bible verse is talking about remember the the um topic is being spiritually minded in the face of persecution. So the question one would ask is what does it mean to be persecuted? What does persecution mean? This is Bible study interactive. You can unmute, you can type, you can whatever you want to do. What does persecution mean? What do you understand as persecution? Uh, I think persecution means to be victimized or to suffer because of what you believe in or what you practice. So in the context of what we're discussing, maybe for your political beliefs. Okay. As a Christian, this time I've moved a little bit from politics and I've moved into being a Christian. But yeah, that is actually true. Is um, being victimized, that's a good one. Being victimized, though victimized is a big word. And being, um, what other word did you use? Um, suffering suffering thank you so being victimized suffering for what you believe and as christians okay thank you as christians we have that unique um, ability to be unique um uh suffer yes thank you so i'm just going to quickly read the things that people 
um, people have said. Sisanike says judged, yes. Yeah, there's a type of judgment there. Um, Elder Samuel means opposition from your course. Thank you. Damilola says suffer, victimized for a course you believe in. Thank you. Ganged up again. I like that one. Ganged up against. Jesus was ganged up against to, you know, oppressed. Yes. Yeah, so persecution comes in different, in different ways. But now we're really focusing on being persecuted because you're a Christian and not just because of any other thing. Um, and I just want to state here very clearly at the beginning, in case I forget, if you do something wrong and you're being punished, you're not being persecuted just so that you understand that sometimes, you know, you might make a mistake or you might do something completely in error, maybe at your place of work or in school or um, in whatever it is that you're doing and, you know, you're, you get punished for it. And then you now come out and say, oh, I'm being persecuted. That is not what's persecuted. You're being punished. I know the two of them start with people is a totally different thing. Now, how the punishment is meted out, how the punishment is given to you, if it's different from somebody else's own, that's where it might, a, a kind of persecution can come in. But I want us to understand that because one of the things that um, I've been learning, you know, we're doing this 21 day declutter. I'm one of those people that are doing it. So this is how we used to out ourselves. And just remember that you're not a victim. It's how you think that you are. Whatever you're thinking about, it's how you, what you become. So if you keep thinking that, oh, everybody's persecuting me, you might find out that people will actually be persecuted for no reason, not even because you're a Christian, but just because you know you are attracting persecution, the, the thinking that you're having. So don't, don't have a victim um, mentality, but have a conqueror mentality. Conqueror. So you're a victor, you're a you're victorious, you're more than a conqueror. So um, so the so you have to also understand that it's not about. It's not about um, just the fact that you are a Christian and so therefore you cannot be punished if you do something wrong. We thank God for the mercy of God. We thank God because a lot of times um, the Bible says that the um, lawful captive, you know, he says free the lawful captive. So sometimes you have been lawfully captivated, but then he sets you free. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like Pastor, we say, let's have fun today. <laughs> so, um. Yeah, so that's what we're talking about. Uh, and I was asking, uh, what does persecution mean? What does it mean to be spiritually minded? Because the topic is being spiritually minded. I've actually given a hint about it. Being spiritually minded in the face of persecution. So what does it mean to be spiritually minded? Anyone? Yes, to walk in obedience to God's word. Thank you very much. That's a very good one. And um, that is when somebody is spiritually minded. Yes, more, 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 more. What does it mean to be spiritually minded? To set your heart on the word of God. Thank you very much. To set your heart on the word of God. Not your, just your physical heart, but your like spiritual heart, like your, your will, your decision and stuff. To be led by the spirit. To be led by the spirit. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like somebody to also say it, say something in, you know, layman says that, you know, I feel like that ganged up against as in persecution, like in my head now. That's what I'll be thinking. Anytime I say, oh, persecution ganged up against. So, like, just bring it down, you know, like every day. You know, what does it mean to be spiritually minded? The word spiritually minded is already big English. So, what does it mean to be spiritually minded? Sensitive to God. Sensitive to God. Thank you. To have God's mind and perspective, to read the Bible and follow what it tells you. Thank you. So how does the two of them meet? So to live by the word of God. Thank you. So how, do, how does the two of them meet? To be spiritually minded in the face of persecution. So how, does, how, do, how do they meet? Like, what does it mean to be spiritually minded in the face of persecution? What does that mean? Making decisions based on God's word. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. What does it mean? Spiritually minded in the face of persecution. So that's where we are coming. So how? Do, so we have already explained that persecution is suffering, opposition, victimization, being ganged up against. So how can we? And uh, when when we are living by the word of God 
and we're being led by the spirit, how does that help us in the face of persecution? To have a spiritual perspective, thank you very much, even though one is suffering, seeing persecution the way God, ah, please, that's be healthy with this, please clap, your, clap for yourself wherever you are, seeing persecution the way God sees it. Seeing, we cannot clap for her, so you feel free to clap for her as well. Being perse seeing persecution the way God sees it. That is the, the beautiful way of actually expressing what being spiritually minded is. So when we when we look at persecution, like I was saying before, it's not about saying, oh, woe me, see my life, see how uh, this thing, see what they are doing to me and everything. What does God say about persecution, which is what we have been saying? What does the Bible say about persecution? And how can we follow what the word of God says about how we see persecution? So one of the questions I ask um, is, must everybody be persecuted? Must everyone be persecuted? Must everyone be persecuted? Thank you for clapping for Debbie. Must everyone be persecuted? Anyone can answer and what you think, yes? Go for it, Sister Nome. Sorry? Oh, because you unmuted, so I was wondering if you wanted I'll to say your pardon. <laughs> so does, so must everyone be persecuted? Must everyone go through persecution? As a child of God, yes. As a child of God, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. People are saying yes. Okay. Does anybody write? No, not everyone. Thank you. Yes. Any other person? Count it all joy when you fall into temptation. So it sets in. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. That's true. No, if it were possible, I don't want to die like that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Elder Gift. Thank you very much for being very honest. Yes, that is exactly the kind of ex this thing I want. So the thing is. So now I'm wondering how to, how to continue. Okay, so if we go to 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 12. Um, if we go to 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 12, let me see if I can find it. Uh, okay, I'll just read from verse 10 because I'm reading from the message. And it says, you've been a good, let me see, let me see, verse 12. Anyone, anyone who wants to live out for Christ is in for a lot of trouble. There's no getting around it. So that's what, and let me look for it in another, in another um, translation. And the Living Bible says, verse 12, yes. And those who decide to please Christ by living godly lives will suffer at the hands of those who hate him. That is verse 12. And in the Living Bible, I'll just read it in King James so that if, uh, okay, King James, yeah. Verse 12 says, yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Yes, you can. But just one minute, I'll I'll give I'll give you enough time to well not enough time, but I'll give you time to quickly say, share your testimony. So yes, we are we are going to face persecution. Now there are different levels, like like um this person um I, I can't remember who said it, but is this persecution that you might face might not be the one that people are actually facing right now. I remember um reading when I was younger. I remember reading a book called Faith Despite the KGB. And it was then in the in Russia or in the uh, USSR at the time, there was the KGB that was the secret service. And I and and they were they were arresting people and um um killing people that were that profess to be Christians. And I remember reading it. And I remember I, I got out, I, I came away scared at the time. I was really young. And I came away scared at the time. I was like, is this what I have to do for me to be a Christian? But then as I grew older, I realized that every God that God gives you the level that you, you can um you can take. And now the reason about as in why do we have to get persecuted is because it actually brings glory to God. When I read that, in spite of the fact that I was scared and stuff as a young child, but I was encouraged because I said, if these people can do this thing, that means that I could do it too. But I was thinking that there's no way I can do it. But you see, the thing that, that you might not ever know is that God gives you the strength that you need at the time that you need it. You might not even know how strong you are until, you know, you now get to where you are. And now the reason why people get persecuted is actually because, you know, they hate Jesus. And 
I was reading this morning where uh, Jesus was talking to the Pharisees and he said, oh, that you're doing the work of your father. Me, I'm doing the work of my own father. And you are doing the work of your father, the devil. So I was like, oh, everybody's doing the work of their father. Okay, that makes sense. So you don't like my father. That's obviously the issue. That's why you're actually attacking me. That, that, that's fine. Me, I'm still more than a conqueror. So that's what I got. And um, Samuel said, uh, GF, I don't know. I have a strong feeling that that is not you that said that. So yes. So how do we react to being persecuted? Matthew chapter 5, verse 10 says, um, verse 10 says, you're blessed when your commitment to God, I'm reading the message uh, translation today, so for them start from NLT. God blesses those who are persecuted for doing right, for the kingdom of heaven is theirs. God blesses you when you people mock you and persecute you and lie about you and say all sorts of evil things against you. Because you are my followers, be happy about it. Be very glad for a great reward awaits you in heaven. And remember, the ancient prophets were persecuted in the same way. So, uh, oh, Chizim has joined, uh, bless her. She has joined the Sunday school. Well done, thank you. I didn't really understand what you said, Chizim, but don't worry, we'll get there eventually. So thank you, well done for joining Sunday school. And then, so he says here, this is how we are to react. He says that we are to be happy about it. Be very glad. <laughs> I don't know if you're hearing what, what Jesus is saying. This is the red letter. He said, be happy if you're being persecuted. That is your spirit. That's the spiritual mind you should have. So if you're being persecuted and you're not happy about it, just tell yourself, just say, God, Daddy God, I'm not happy about it. Please change my, my mindset. Change my existing thinking about it. Change me so that I can start becoming happy about being persecuted. Be very glad for a great reward awaits you in heaven. And remember, so you're not the first person. There are other people that have been persecuted before you. I'll use this opportunity to give Sister Anome the opportunity to quickly say her, um, give her testimony quickly. Yeah, praise God. I come from a, a family of fighters. And when I gave my heart to Jesus and I started learning to read my Bible, you know, that passage was one of the first passages I read, you know, that uh, you have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I tell you not to resist an evil person, but whoever slaps you on your right cheek, turn to the turn to him, the other also. And I remembered saying to God, you know, what kind of an advice is that God? You know, if someone slaps me, I'm going to knock them out. And. I remember the first time I shared the gospel with someone in a public place and a man was insulting me. Uh, he, he, he actually wanted to attack me. And in that instance, God gave me so much peace. The fear had gone. Uh, but also, I was not wanting to retaliate. And I remember going home and God now brought that passage, that same passage back to me. And I said, OK, Lord, I understand that. I get it. Praise God. Praise God. That is exactly, that is an awesome testimony because there are three things that she's mentioned there. She said, first of all, that she understood her background and she understood what her natural inclination was too. So she prayed about it and she was like, I don't really get it. But she still went ahead and, and she was, this time she, what she was doing was preaching the gospel. Now remember that persecution is not just when you're preaching the gospel. Persecution is when you're living life the way God asks you to live it. So, and then you get persecuted because of it. So there's, that there's that and um, it's not just when you're preaching and then the final thing is that god gave her boldness god gave her peace god gave her bold. she and she and god was able to help her to forgive and i remember when i was when we we're doing my, when i was doing cell group and um, just a, a few weeks ago and we were my um we we're reading um acts chapter four and i remember that the, the, the disciples prayed for boldness and i remember i just realized that it just struck me i said oh it's not because they were already bold because if they were already bold they would have prayed for boldness but they were pre proper scared even when they were preaching and they were they were scared and they but they still pray for boldness and the holy spirit made them bold and that's you know one of the songs i've been singing since last year and i'll keep singing is you make me brave you make me bold you make me that there's no fear you know so that's one of the things i keep telling myself because that's what the word of god says about me and you know you behave that way somebody has given a testimony here and said that she came from a home 
that was from another religion and she was persecuted every day for choosing Jesus. She was thrown out and victimized, but she gives God glory because he never left her. So, you know, there, there are different kinds of persecution. She has, that, that's one, I don't, I cannot even fathom what it's like. I remember some other people that I know and uh, some other, other person I know that had exactly the same um, um, challenge. And she too, you know, now we thank God for reconciliation, but she too also faced persecution because she chose to follow Jesus. So there's also, there's also that. Um, and we have, we have all those kind of um, testimonies. Even, it might not even be that big. It might be something small. Let me give an example that really struck me. And I know I prayed for this, this guy that day. He came back from school and they gave him a report and said that everybody in his class lied, but he chose to say the truth. And of course, that would have been so difficult for somebody to stand up and say, well, that, that young person is actually Noah. <laughs> so I'll measure his name because, you know, I don't know. I can't see, can't see whether he's here or not. But I remember he was really young and he came back from school and they gave a report that every, something had gone happened in school and everybody had chosen not to say the truth, but he said the truth. And I can imagine, imagine the peer pressure. Everybody is looking at you like you dare not, you dare not. And if you dare, but he did. And you don't even understand what happens when you overcome that one. There's a higher one that comes, but you win crowns of, that's like people look up to you and be like, I can trust this guy. God looks up to you even more than people. God looks up to you and says, I can trust this man. I can trust this young girl. I can trust this child. I can trust you because you stood up for me. I will stand up for you. And, and so, okay, there's a, there's a, a whole Bible study going on. So there's school going on in the, in the chat. And unfortunately, I don't have time, so I can't really read it very quickly. So, but really, it is, um, thank you so much for, for participating in this uh, discussion. And I really hope the, the, time, the time was okay because 9.30 is, you know, is a lot earlier. But um, I'd like feedback. I'd like um, if you could send me personal feedback as to if the time was okay. And if also you've learned anything, if there's any suggestion as to how to make the Sunday school better, I'm very open to listening to it. I really appreciate every single one of you. So when the, when we, well, the, what um, and Debbie said about being spiritually minded is seeing persecution the way God says it, sees it. And he says it again, be happy and be glad. I don't know. But it doesn't matter how big the persecution is or how small it might seem to you. But no matter what you have been persecuted about, be as in when it comes to following Jesus and doing the things that is as supposed to be done, the way it's supposed to be done, then you know that God is very, very proud of you. God is very proud of you. And that is what he wants. You're doing exactly what he wants. This world is more than, you know, our, our memory verse says that, um, not, not things present, not things to come. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. And that is one of the things that you, I want, even this persecution can never separate. It doesn't mean that God doesn't love you. In fact, it even shows that he loves you even more. And you're a danger and you're a threat to the um, kingdom of darkness. Father, I thank you. I pray that even as we move on from this and we go into the week, thinking and remembering what you have taught us, that Lord, you even make it, make it, Give us that gladness that many of us might definitely not have in the name of Jesus. And for those of us that are currently going through persecution, I ask that Lord you strengthen us in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. So thank you very much. God bless all of you. Thank you. I'm going to have to read some of the things that was, that was said. Okay, now, thank you. See you later at um, 11 o'clock in Crawford House or online. God bless. Bye-bye. Just want to play my song, you know. This song has been on my head since, so let's flow with that. Minister Mercy Chiwa. Are you ready? Are you sure you are ready? No, I don't think you are ready. If you are ready, you are supposed to release a shot!